Greetings. I know it's been a minute, but I'm back with another video. This one will highlight how to import a CSP file into an SQL Server using Power Automate Desktop. Now there are various ways to accomplish this, where some might be simpler and more effective. But why not show you another way to import a CSP into an SQL Server, this time using Power Automate Desktop. Okay, let's begin. All right, let's look at our CSP file. We have uh, various columns, mainly consisting of numerical values. This is our column headers. And this is just a sample CSP file for costs associated with some AWS services. This is how our data looks. So our task at hand is to take this data and import it into our SQL database. I have already created the columns here and set the appropriate data type, which will be key for our import process. And as you can see, if I run this, our database is currently empty. Okay, great. So we are going to take all the data from our CSV file and import it into our tables here. So if we load our blank action sheet, the first thing we want to do is we want to establish a connection to our SQL database. So search for SQL and let's use open SQL connection action. We need to set our connection string. So if you click this little icon to the right, we build the connection. I'm running SQL Express on Windows. So I pick Microsoft OLEDB provider for SQL Server and click next. Then we have to enter our server name. Now our server name is not only the name of the server, but you will have to enter it as it appears in our SQL Studio. Host name backslash SQL Express. So enter that here. Next, you want to enter credentials that has read write access to the database. I will use my test user account. And you will also have to enter the name of the database. Our database is called TestDB. And if we test the connection, great. Connection succeeded. Hit OK. Your password will be in clear text, so just keep that in mind and then hit save. Okay, we have a connection to the database. Now let's load our, in our CSV file. Search for read from CSV file action. and specify the path to our CSV along with the name. Under advanced, make sure and turn on that our data has column headers so that our first row is ignored. Save that. So now we have a variable that is holding our CSV data. So, if we look at our database here, we can see our database is called this. So let's copy and place this in a variable for easier reference.
Let's create it and name it DB. Save that. So now, essentially, we want to loop through each row of data in our CSV. So let's use a for each loop. We specify to loop over our CSV table variable. Okay, so now essentially we want to execute an SQL insert statement for each row. But I want to see how this data looks first. So let's run this. Uh, Actually, let's go ahead and close our SQL connection so our connection doesn't stay open. But I want to run this to see how our data looks, to see how it reads the table. Let's run it for a bit and then stop it. And let's see how our current item variable looks. Okay, great. It looks how I would expect it. So if we want to target a specific entry, let's add a variable. and reference it. So we want current item, I'll pick zero, which will be our first column in theory. So it should be this column, which are dates. So if we run this and stop, we can look at our variable. And it's a date. So we can target specific columns by the index. OK, great. So we can delete this now. Now let's execute our SQL statement that will insert our rows. So look for the execute SQL statement action. So essentially we're going to insert into our database uh, variable And then we set all of our column headers from our database. So all of these headers listed here. I will paste them in. Now, if you notice, any headers that has a space in it or a dash are within square brackets. So keep that in mind as well. So we have each of our database column titles listed here.
So now let's set the values for each. So we know our values will be in current item, but we need to specify them individually by index. So specify the index, but also keep in mind that they will have to line up and be in the same order we listed our database titles in. And we will have to place them within single quotes and separate by comma. So I, I will paste in my remaining entries. So it should look like that. Index from 0 to 13 to match our titles. Timeout can be 30. So let's save that. So essentially, we open our connection. We load our CSV file, we set our database, and for each row in our CSV file, we execute an SQL statement that will insert the data into our database. Upon completion, we close the connection to our SQL database. So currently, if we look at our database and we execute the select, our database is empty. And if we run it, completed. And if we check our database, we now have 185 rows of data. And that should match our CSV file. One hundred and eighty six rows minus our title row, so one hundred and eighty five. Okay, great. And that completes our video of how we would write CSV file content to a database. You can expound upon this to only write certain rows or even write directly from a Google Sheet or Smartsheet, etc. Let me know if you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe. Brought to you by AIP Solutions.